Okay, now I need to get uh, soap over here. And also do some stuff over here, too. Get rid of some enemy units. And have Micaiah go for another level, too. Uh, that's a pretty good chance, but I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to go ahead and use the Steel Axe instead. Since it's probably the safest course of action. I'm also going to heal you. Another tactic you're probably going to want to make use of is unnecessary healing. Where it's like... You really don't need to, like, desperately heal someone, but there is, like, someone with, like, just, you know, missing one HP of health, you can heal them anyway. It's a good way to get experience if you really need it. So that's just a tactic you should keep in mind. Okay, can he... Okay, yeah, he can. Okay, that works. Let me get him all the way down here so we can attack. gonna switch to the bronze dagger so I don't waste the card too much. And we get a chest key! Hooray! Um, let's see. I would move these guys forward a little more, but if I remember correctly, I think we actually get some enemy reinforcements from uh, down here and then also from other over here too, so that's why I'm not in any major hurry to move just yet. In fact, I believe, yep, here they are. Or actually it might just be from here and here. I don't remember if we actually get reinforcements over here or not, probably in hard mode. I might be thinking of hard mode. In this chest we have a wind edge, which is actually a indirect sword. So it's a very helpful item. Good to grab. And I'm going to put Leonardo and Nolan at this ledge over here. I would put Micaiah, but since Micaiah has low HP, I don't want her to get actually accidentally get hit by one of these weapons, even though they will have a very low chance of hitting. It's still not worth it if your unit dies to a very low hit, so that's why I'm trying to avoid that. Wow, another great level up. If only that uh, thing that went to magic actually went to defense instead, then that would be that would have been pretty much perfect. And in this chest we have a Thani, which is a light spell from Akaya that is really really good. It's actually really effective against uh, horse units and knight units. It'll do a lot more damage. So very helpful weapon. Um, Okay, more damage. Uh, one thing I like to do right here... Is I actually want to move two of my units down to the lower level. Because as I already said, we will get some enemy reinforcements from over here. And if we have units down here, they'll actually try to go this way up instead of this way. It's actually a good, you know, lure tactic, so... Definitely gonna make use of that. Do some unnecessary healing right here. Okay, there are those guys. So I'm gonna put Micaiah and Leonardo down here. And I'm gonna give Edward the Wind Edge. Um. Oh, dang it. I was also going to give him a Thani, too. So 
so we can hand over to Makaya in a little bit, but that's fine. Damage is already done, I guess you could say. Okay, so yeah, now let's try to lure them over, which I'm sure should work. Okay, yeah, it did. Perfect. So let's move Roar out of the way, move Makaya up here. I can also get for the Thawney, too. And I'm going to start moving Nolan this other way so we can get rid of these units. Or actually, no, I might... Yeah, I'll move him this way. He can take the longer route. I just don't want to make these guys move away. Okay, Iron Bow, Wind Edge, and there we go. We're pretty well set up for this attack. And yeah, that lit those uh you know, those little lights that appeared over Micaiah and so uh that was uh basically letting you know that the support bonuses actually went into effect. Uh, basically, uh, in like in other games, whenever you support with another unit, uh, certain abilities will go up in this game. Um, you'll get support bonuses in attack, defense, your hit percentage, and also your avoid percentage. I think you can also get critical hit bonuses too, but um, I don't really know what determines that. But basically, these bonuses actually depend on uh, the character's affinities right here. Uh, each characters have different affinities. Water, earth, wind, wind, dark, light. There's a few other ones too. And basically, each of these affinities give off certain bonuses to supports. And, you know, you can mix and match different affinities together and you'll get certain bonuses. I don't really know that much and I don't know what the best supports are in the game. But, you know, that's basically what that's all about. I might try to put it somewhere like in a video description or something where all the different affinities get bonuses to, but again, I really don't know what all of those are at the top of my head anyway, so... I do apologize for the lack of knowledge, but that's just it. I don't have very much knowledge because I really don't even use supports that much. Like, I, I, I use supports, but, you know, I don't really look into them very much. If I have a bunch of units that are going to be together and that they can support, you know, I will support them, but otherwise I really don't worry about it too much. Meanwhile, no one's going to take care of things up here. While my other units damage these guys. Now, if I remember, if I remember correctly, I don't think these guys move at all, so I don't have to worry about them. Still gonna be careful though. No one should be okay by himself though. Because no one is a beast, as, I, as I've already said before. He really is a beast though. I think I could actually safely say that no one is the best member of the Dawn Brigade. Especially when it comes to hard mode, because in hard mode. Any user that ha or any unit that uses axes is actually going to be, you know, a lot more powerful because basically the weapon triangle, like if you don't remember what the weapon triangle is, um, swords beat axes, axes beat lances, and lances beat swords. On hard mode, the weapon triangle, among with many other things, are actually thrown out the window. So yeah, axes like immediately become like the best weapon in the game. Okay, yeah, you just stay there. Um, can you kill him? Okay, that works. As long as you can't kill him. So I wanted to give this kill to Edward. But yeah, now we can actually move up to the boss now. Which is good, because I'm tired of playing around. Not really a big fan of this chapter. This chapter's kind of boring. 
So I do apologize if this has been boring for you guys, but that's just the way it is. Can I get attacked at all? No, I can't. Okay. That works for me. Meanwhile, Nolan's gonna continue to kick ass. Oh, he also gets a steel bow. That's not gonna be very helpful, though, because Leonardo doesn't really do very good with steel bows. He doesn't have that much speed, so he's not gonna double very much, and I don't think his skill is that great either. I don't remember, though. Okay, well, let's move up here now. I don't think the boss moves, so we don't have to worry about that. Still, though, I would like to be careful. Okay, there's Soth. I was wondering where Soth was. But I already moved them. Okay, can I get killed? No, I can't. I'll get close to getting killed, though. So anyway, I'm going to show you guys how powerful Thany is. 30 freaking damage. I didn't even need to do that damage with no one, but... Yeah, Thany is very, very powerful, and because Micaiah is generally going to have good enough skill to actually 100% hit all the time, yeah, that's definitely going to be a good boss killer, considering that a lot of the bosses in this first part are going to be uh, paladins and generals, so very, very, very helpful spell. It also does a lot of damage in general, so you can use it against other units, too. But yeah, Thaney is a beast. Thaney is the light spell equivalent of Nolan. Nolan the Beast. Okay, in this treasure chest we have an energy drop. I believe energy drops, um, yeah, increases your strength by two. Um, this is a little, uh, I wouldn't say it's like a pet peeve or anything, but one of the things I like to do in my playthroughs of Fire Emblem games is I like to save all the stat boosting items till the very end of the game, which to some people that doesn't make a lot of sense because, like, I mean, at the end of the game, they can be helpful in, like, preparing yourself for the, you know, the final battle of the game or whatever. And, like, it'd make more sense to actually use it throughout the game to help you through some of the other parts. And, like, you know, usually I decide my teams before I actually even play the game anyway. So, I mean, it does make sense to, like, why wait? Why just use them whenever you get them? But I don't know. I, I think it's more orderly to actually keep them to the very end. But anyway, we're done. At last, glory be, the abbot will have his medicine. Wait for me, I'll return soon. So yeah, what I think I'm actually going to do, if you haven't noticed already, is I'm going to save one chapter for every update. I might change that as time goes on, because some of these chapters can be very long, so... If, um, you know, some of these parts take a lot longer than I think they will, you might, I might split them up across a few days, but for the most part, I'm going to try to aim for a chapter a day. And I'll try to make it so there are no videos over 20 minutes. So yeah, that's basically what I'm going to be doing. Ah, it's Gerard. Captain Jackass. What are you doing here?
I've got a bad feeling about this fox. So yeah, we got uh, 120 bonus experience for that chapter, which is not a lot. It's honestly not a lot at all, but we'll get more bonus experience for future chapters. And yeah, that's uh, chapter two. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time for chapter three. This has been Slim Kirby, and let's play Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. See you guys next time. Later, folks.